Alright guys, so today we're going to be installing my uh, custom fuse box. I didn't really make a video making this, but I put a few pictures of the process. So I'll go ahead and throw that clip in right now. So today we're going to, sorry for the sniffling, I have my allergies going on right now, but but first we're going to install a circuit breaker. This is my old 70 amp breaker, if you guys remember from my compressor setup. Uh, that compressor setup is gone now, I'll explain it later. But now i got to install a 100 amp circuit breaker in its place so I can run this to the fuse box. Basically a circuit breaker, you guys should know what it is, it works just like an inline fuse. And uh, whenever there's too much amperage or a shortage, this thing uh, breaks so it cuts off all the power so you don't set your Jeep on fire. And then whenever you resolve the issue, issue you can just reset it and it works just like um, nothing ever happened. And you don't you gotta keep buying fuses or anything, so that's why a circuit breaker is really cool. A lot of people don't know about these. Um, also, there will be an Amazon link to everything in the description. Uh, this is a lunchbox with five re uh, relays, a bunch, uh, a distribution block here, and a fuse box right here. There's a few things you gotta do today. We gotta first make uh, install this. I made this mount myself. Again, I'll show you guys the pictures if you guys saw that. I gotta put a ground as well as run the power wire and mount up this plate with my circuit breaker. So let's go ahead and get right into it first. I gotta take off this old circuit breaker, 70 amp, and replace it with this 100 amp. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So I'm not going to bore you guys with me measuring and creating a positive wire in the ground. So I'm just going to check up with you guys in like three seconds when I have all that stuff figured out and uh, plumbed up. So um, time for movie magic. Alright, after like four hours of uh, a little bit of procrastination and wiring, I finished it. Here's the fuse box. Um, so let's go ahead and just go over from beginning to end how it works. So basically, I have that Busman circuit breaker right there. So as you guys can see, now, now the circuits are cut off. So I can turn off all my electrons at one time like that. Reset it. Done. All right. So power wire runs all the way across. over and to my lunchbox uh, aftermarket fuse box or whatever you want to call it, fuse box. Uh, I have a fuse blade. Uh, it's called bladed fuses. Sorry, I can't even talk. So that's where the primary power goes to right here, to the primary power, to the fuse, to the relay here. So then I have five relays under, but I have space to add five more. But for now, I don't have that many accessories at the moment, or lights or anything, so I'm just going to keep it at 5 for now. And uh, this is a distribution block. This originally was up here, but I just moved it to here for now. Double stick taped to the relays. Should work just fine. So then I have it all wired up, so you have two, pretty much four of these uh, posts per accessory. So you have your power, your main power from the battery, and your switch power. So your switch power just comes from your switch, which triggers the relay, and uh, yeah, anyways. So that's all how that's mechanically uh, done. I, did, uh, I didn't make a video over this because I pretty much just watched a video making this. I'll leave a link up top here um, on what exactly I watched. Also, Bleeping Jeep has one. It's a little bit more complicated where they use a Cherokee fuse box, but it's pretty much the same exact thing. The main essentials you need is a container or a plate to put all this stuff on, this fuse, uh, blade fuse holder, relays, and a distribution block, and that's pretty much all you need, and a lot of wire. Um, anyway, so 
Right now I just only have those reverse lights wired up. Comes with a nice little cover. Put that on there. Um, for negatives, I have I just made a post in my lunch box and put a screw all the way through. Primary ground right here. This wire, four gauge, and I ran it to the body ground right there. And then from there, I just have this one nut I can take off and just add negatives or two for the relays, the negatives for the relay. And uh, I don't have to take off the, the main anytime because I have that double nut system or whatever you call it. Um, so that's pretty nice. All right, so that's pretty much that it for that. As far as this goes, I made a custom mount um, out of some aluminum or brass or whatever. It was just whatever I had laying around. Uh, in the shop so it just connects to these two parts where the fender is and it also connects I don't know if you guys can see in there but there's a screw that connects the ECU to uh, uh, mount it and I just did it to that um, so that should work just fine I'm probably gonna put some silicone around here so I can get a, a nice wire watertight seal but for now it's not a really big deal um, this gold stuff is reflective uh, tape, which is heat reflective. The ECU gets just a little uh, steamy at times, so um, I might have to adjust this because as you guys can see, it kind of pokes into the ECU, and I can just dial it where it's parallel with it. Um, but for now, I'm just going to run it. It doesn't seem like we're having any problems or issues, so it should be fine. So I have the tape all the way around. It's not a really high heat area because it's really far away from there, but as you guys know, JK um, engine bays get pretty steamy. So anyways, so we have switches coming out. Um, my one switch is for my reverse lights, as you guys can see here. Um, so all, all I gotta do is run a switch, uh, two wires. One from the battery to the switch, and then uh, from the switch to the fuse box. And that's all I gotta do for everything. And of course do a ground for the switch too. But it helps out a lot um, with wiring, because you have to do it all the way, and then you got to solder and do all that stuff with the relay. But for here, you just connect it straight to the posts, and you're done. So it saves a lot of time, and it's also super, super organized. Um, so right here, let's turn on the switch. And as you guys can see, the reverse lights are working. Pretty nice. Sorry for the short video, but that's pretty much how my uh, fuse box, custom fuse box works. And it costed about maybe $50 for all this stuff, $50, which is really nice compared to S-Pod's like $6 billion they want for their stuff. Um, of course, not the same quality, it's not, the, it's not metal, it's not, doesn't have the warranty or whatever, but make yourself feel accomplished and it's pretty much the same thing.